Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James and today we're going to start a new short series where we're going to take a look at making a menu system in Unity. So this will be a full system that you can use in your game. So obviously we'll make this very simple little title screen here and we'll have an options menu with graphic settings you can change and volume settings you can change and we'll go through as well creating a loading screen like this that takes a little bit of time to load and once it finishes loading you can press a button to jump into your scene and we'll also have a pause menu that we can use as well. So with all that in mind I'm going to go ahead and jump into a new project and we're going to start working on the system. Okay so I've got a brand new empty project here. One thing I want to do is import some assets that we're going to use in this short series, uh, but I don't want to, I don't want to limit you to just uh, using these assets. The, the assets that we use are stuff that it doesn't matter whether you use these things or not. So we just have some nice things that we can use along the way. So I'm just going to import these just to make things a bit simpler. But of course, if you have your own assets that you want to use, that's perfectly fine. I'll just very quickly go over what's in here. We've got a few audio files, a little bit of music, some sound, a simple sound effect. We've got a font that we'll use. We've got a particle system that I'm going to use just as a background for our scene. And we've got a scene set up so that we can test out our pausing in the game. This is just a simple scene. Literally all that's in here is a few bouncy balls to uh, bounce up and down. I'll give this a second to load up. There we go, it'll bounce in like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and start a new scene. So I'm gonna to go to file a new scene. I'm gonna use a basic built-in one and we'll just create this here and I'm going to save this into my scenes folder in here I'm gonna oh, what am I, doing? I need to hit control and s of course I can't remember to, remember to save things here we go save scene and I'm going to save this as main menu then I'm going to get my camera I'm going to make the background instead of using the sky box I'm going to use a solid color and I'm going to use a nice dark color not quite 100% black but dark enough and I'm gonna get that particle effect that we had here. So I'm gonna grab this particle system, drop it into our scene, and there we go. We have a very simple little particle effect. And you can go through and play around with this particle if you want yourself, but it's basically just a very simple combo of two different particles uh, doing a kind of generic background effect. Let's also zoom in my camera, like so, so that it is filled up by this effect. I can move around if I want to, but if I go ahead and play now, I can make that appear. Uh, okay, we've got this big load every time we play. We don't want to deal with that big load every time we play. So let's go into Edit, Project Settings. And if I go to Editor here and then scroll down to Enter Play Mode Options, I can turn that on and leave off, reload domain and reload scene. So now we won't reload the scene every time it tries to play the game. So it'll launch straight into playing. Uh, okay, so with that done, let's go ahead and start setting up our canvas. So I'm going to right click here. I'm going to create a UI canvas that I'm going to call main menu. I'm going to switch to 2D view and I'm going to double click on it to zoom out. And then what I'm going to do, what I like to do with my canvases is go to canvas scaler here and instead of constant pixel size, I'm going to set it to scale with screen size and I'm going to set it to be 1920 by 1080, which is a default, a resolution size, the most standard resolution everyone uses. I have my game view down here set to that setting so I have it on full HD 1920 by 1080 so that I have it's representing what that should look like in the game for us so with that done then I can go ahead and add a couple of things so first thing I want to do is add a title for our game so I'm gonna go right here and right click go to UI and I'm gonna add a text mesh pro text instead of a default text so the first time you do that you need to import the text mesh pro essentials TextMesh Pro, if you haven't used it before, it's just a better way of using the text system built in. Or it's better than the default Unity text system, basically. And it can do some extra things, but more importantly, it makes text look a bit nicer. So let's just call this, uh, I'm just going to go with the game title. Very, very simple. And then I want to use the font that I've included in my assets. But if we go to font asset here, you can't just directly use a font, so I can't find that one here. What you have to do is go to the font asset itself. I'm going to go to this top one here and right click on it. And then if you go to create text mesh pro font asset with that asset selected, then it'll create a version of that that we can use in text mesh pro. So now if I go back to my text here, I can select that asset like so. And I can drag this out much bigger like this. I'm going to set auto size to true and set the maximum to be 300. 
Uh, I'm going to drag this out like this, and I'm going to make it align over to the right with the alignment here. And boom, there we have a very simple game title in place. The next thing we want to do is add some buttons into our scene here. So let's right click on main menu again. I'm going to go to UI button text mesh pro. And again, uh, I'm going to get the text here. I'm going to set this to be our same font. Then I'm going to resize this button a little bit bigger, drag it over here. Say we we'll put it on the right hand side of our screen. Let's make our text bigger as well. Let's say 45. 56, there we go, that'll do. Uh, before I do anything else, before I make this button look like I wanted to, we're gonna use this as a base for all the buttons we're gonna use in our menu system. So making, we're gonna make it a prefab, and making a prefab of a button is really handy because you want all your buttons to look the same. So if you make a change to any of your buttons, you want that to be applied to all of your buttons. So I'm gonna make a little minor change to this. First of all, I'm gonna remove the source image here. Then I'm going to change what the colors that it goes when it's highlighted. So I'm going to go my highlighted color. I'm going to make it go kind of a little bit green. The pressed color will make it go blue. And the selected color, I'm just going to use the same green as well. So now if I quickly play, you can see when we hover over the button and we click it, it all changes color and looks nice. So that's really important to do because the default colors that are built into Unity really don't look nice it's very hard you want it to be very ident identifiable to your players when they hover over a button that they know it can be interacted with so it's really important that you uh, make it so that the colors are more distinct than the default slightly different shades of gray that are built into unity so with that in mind then i'm also going to um no, that's it, that's it for the moment with visuals, but I am also going to go into my assets folder. I'm gonna right click and create a folder that we'll call prefabs, like so, and we'll drag that button into there. So now we can use that prefab over and over. So then with that done, I'm going to rename this to be the start button. I'm gonna change the text to be start. Then I'm gonna make two copies of it. So I'll duplicate this one and move it down, duplicate this one and move it down. And then this is going to be my options button. And this one is going to be my quit button. Okay, so then here we'll have options and here we'll have quit. Okay, so very quickly we have a simple menu laid out and looking how we want it to look. And with that in mind, then we can go ahead and start making it so that this menu actually does something. So let's stop this running here. And I'm going to go and create a scripts folder for us to use. Create a C sharp, no, not script, <laughs> create a folder that we'll call scripts. There we go. And I'm going to right click and create this time a C sharp script that we'll call main menu. And I'm going to attach that to here, like so. Why did that not? Oh, I think it just hadn't compiled the script yet. There we go, I was moving too fast. Okay, so with that done, let's go ahead and open this up here. So I'll just jump to this being open. Okay, so we have our script open. Let's just jump back in, for, in here for a second and see what we need this script to do. So obviously we wanted to, when we click the start button, we wanted to load into the next scene. When we click the options button, we'll want it to open the options screen that we'll have. We don't currently have one, of course. Uh, and we'll then also want a quit button to quit the game. So what we can do then is jump back into our script. We're gonna create three functions for us to use. So public, oh, don't know why I did that. Public void start game. We'll have a public void open options we'll also want a close options here for when the option screen is already open of course so we'll have a close options and finally we'll have our public void quit game okay so we obviously want to be able to have these do something. For the moment, we're not gonna make the open options and close options do anything 
because we don't have an option screen set up. We'll do that in the in the next video. But for before we get into that, we'll have our start game here. So obviously we need to know the name of the scene we want to go to. So up the top, we'll create a reference for public string first level, like so. And then to be able to actually load into our scene, we want to go to the top here and say using Unity Engine dot scene management. Okay, so then in our start game, we can just simply say scene manager dot load scene and take us to whatever the first level is. And then in our quick game, all we're going to do is make this simply say application dot quit. So application.quit, if you're not familiar with it, is how you can get out of uh, any program that is made in Unity. It'll just close out of the program. But more, what's really important to note is that it won't do anything when we're in the editor here. So actually, we'll make it say, we'll just put a little debug in here to say debug.log quitting, just so we know that when we press the button, it's actually working. But the real way to test it is to actually build the game and try that out. Of course, we're not going to go through that process because it's very simple and it does work. It's very easy to do. Uh, okay, so before I hook up these buttons, one thing I want to do is make sure I save my scene. So I'm going to save this scene. Uh, I have already saved it. Uh, but what I want to do is go to my build settings and add this open scene into here. So we've got our main menu. Then the level I want to load into is going to be in our pause scene, we have the pause set up here. I'm actually going to open this and I'm going to save this as a new scene. So I'm going to save it in my scenes folder and I'm just going to call this pause menu. And then I'm going to add that to my build settings over here. So pause menu, then I'm going to copy this name and then in my main menu scene, back to the main menu, I'm going to paste that name in there. So it's spelled and capitalized and has the same spaces, the exact same way as the scene name. And then on my main menu, I'm going to get my buttons. I'm going to highlight all three of them here. I'm going to go to on click here so that we can add an action to when the button is clicked. I'm going to drag my main menu in here. And then on the start button, I'm going to say main menu, start game. On the quit button, main menu, quit game. And on the options button, I'm going to have main menu, open options, which of course at the moment won't actually do anything. So if I go ahead and play now, let's uh, make this maximize when it plays. If I hit quit, I get my message in the bottom corner saying that I'm quitting the game. If I hit options, of course nothing happens. And if I hit start, there we go, we load into our bouncy ball scene. So perfect, that's the basics of our main menu working. Very simple and very easy to do. That's the most straightforward part of all of this. The next thing we'll do is make our options screen work. So thanks for watching this video. I'll be back soon with the next part in the series where, as I said, we'll be taking a look at creating the options menu. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button. Leave some comments down below if you're enjoying the series. And of course, hit the subscribe button to keep all this stuff going longer and longer. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all very soon.